This will be for the CUDA software worksheet, Tangents to Circles. In a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. So right here, this line in blue is the tangent line, okay? It's a tangent line because it intersects the circle at just one point and keeps going. And this line segment here in red is the radius. So at the point where the radius meets the tangent line, that is going to be a right angle. All right, so line M is tangent to circle Q if and only if line M is perpendicular to QP. So they make a right angle with each other. Okay, determine if line AB is tangent to the circle. Let's look at number one. Now, if this line, this is AB right here, if this is tangent to the circle, then it should make a right angle right here. Okay, and that's because we can assume this is the center and if this is the center, then this would be a radius right here. All right. So we just have to use Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right. So if you go to the center of the circle to the circle itself, that's a radius right there. So we can see this is a radius, so R equals 12, okay? And this is also a radius right here, so this is also going to be 12. Okay, so using the Pythagorean theorem across from your right angle is your hypotenuse, okay? That's going to be this entire side length right here. So we have to add eight plus 12 for that side length. All right, so this entire side length here is going to be eight plus 12, which of course is 20. All right, so that side length across from the right angle, that is your hypotenuse. That's always going to be C. The other two sides, A and B, it doesn't matter. So I'll let A equal 16 and B equal 12. A squared is going to be 16 squared. B squared is going to be 12 squared. And C squared is going to be 20 squared. Okay, I know 20 squared is going to be 400. And I'm going to do this on the calculator right here. Really, I should put a question mark here because I don't know if this is true yet. 16 squared plus 12 squared on the calculator, that equals 400. And this equation is true. So the answer is yes. This line AB is tangent. All right, I'll leave number four for you guys. Same process. Next section, find the segment length indicated. Assume that lines which appear to be tangent are tangent. All right, let's see. All right, let's look at number five. This is clearly the center of the circle right here. So this line right here would be a radius. Okay, and this line here appears to be tangent. So the radius and the tangent line, they're going to make a right angle with each other. So this is the right angle right here. Okay, and we're just using Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Going across from your right angle. That's your hypotenuse, that's C. The other two sides, it doesn't matter. I'll let A equal four, and I'll let B equal the question mark. 
A squared is going to be 4 squared. B squared is going to be the question mark squared. You can plug in question mark or just leave it as B. And C squared is going to be 8.5 squared. Okay, solving for B squared. This is positive 4 squared. The opposite is negative 4 squared. I'm going to do that to both sides. And it cancels here. And solving for B squared, the opposite of squaring something is to take the square root. So you want to take the square root on both sides. Square root of B squared is just B. And I'll do this on the calculator. And I get 7.5. That's the value for B, which is the value for the question mark. All right, so I'll save number eight for you guys. And I'll give you a hint. This is the center and this is a radius, okay? If it's six right here, then the radius right here is also going to be six. You're gonna have to add these to get this side length here. So you wanna remember tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. So you see these line segments here, these are both tangent to the same circle and they're from a common point outside the circle. So RS and TS are going to be congruent. All right, let's look at number 10. We have two tangent segments right here and they meet at the same point. So if this one here is 13, this one here is also going to be 13. And I forgot to read the instructions here. They want us to find the perimeter of each polygon. Okay, so we're going to have to uh, find all the segments. Um, let's see. If uh, this one here, we have two tangent segments. They meet outside the circle at the same point. If this is 4.6, this one here is also 4.6. All right. And we're going to have to get this in order to get this. So we have to go around the circle. This is 13 and the whole side length is 25. So this one right here is just going to be 25 minus 13. And that is going to be 12. Okay. So this segment here is 12 which means this segment here is also 12. And this segment here is going to be the whole thing, which is 21.8 minus this piece here, which is 12. And that's gonna be 9.8. So this one here is 9.8. And that means this one here is also 9.8. Okay, so for perimeter, we just add up the sides. All right, I like multiplying by 2. All right, so we have 13 and 13. That's 13 times 2. We have 12 and 12. That's going to be 12 times 2. So we're going to add... 12 times 2. We have the 4.6s times 2. And finally, we have the 9.8s times 2. All right, I'll do this on the calculator. And I get 78.8. All right, I'll have you guys do number 11. Next section, find the angle measure indicated. Assume that lines which appear to be tangent are tangent. Okay, I'm going to give you hints here. So let's see. This is clearly the center, which means that this here is a radius, and this here is also a radius. Okay, so since they're both radiuses, this must be congruent to this. That means if you go across from congruent sides, you have congruent angles. 
So if that one is 63, you go across from the other congruent side, and this angle right here also has to be 63. Now once you have those two, you can easily find this angle right here. Okay, you just do 180 minus the other two. So 180 minus 63 minus 63. And you'll get that angle right there. Now you get that angle and we can assume the lines which appear to be tangent are tangent. So this one right here is clearly the tangent line and this is the radius. So it's gonna make a right angle right here. All right, so you have 90, you have this angle, and then you can solve for the question mark. Subtract these two from 180 to get the question mark. All right, number 14, this is the tangent line right here. And this is a radius, so it's gonna make a right angle right here. Okay, and we're looking at the big triangle. You got 90, you have 44, so you can easily find this angle right here. Just subtract these two from 180 to get this. Now look at the radiuses. This is clearly the center. Okay, this is a radius and this is a radius. So those are congruent. You go across from congruent sides and you have congruent angles. So that angle is going to match that angle. So you solve for this and you'll have this one here as well. You take these two and subtract them from 180 and you will have the question mark. All right, number 15. So this one here appears to be tangent and same with this one here. Those are the tangent lines. Okay, and they make a right angle with the radius. So there's gonna be a right angle here. And this is also a radius. There's gonna be a right angle here. Okay, and right here, you have a four-sided figure or quadrilateral. One, two, three, four sides. We know the sides, interior, um, the interior angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360. All right, so to get the question mark, you do 360 minus 90 minus 90 minus 117. Finally, number 16, this appears to be tangent. This is a radius, so it makes a right angle right here. Okay, and in order to find this angle, it's going to be 180 because the three angles of a triangle add to 180, minus 52, minus 90. All right, and if you look at the center of the circle right here, this is a radius, and this is a radius. All right, so that means those are both congruent. If you go across from sides that are congruent, you have angles that are congruent. So this angle is gonna match that angle. So once you get this, you have this angle here, subtract these two from 180, and that will give you the question mark. 